Last week, I was in Barcelona, where I casted the WESG. It's a $40,000 StarCraft II tournament, where, of course, some of the best players on the planet competed for a part of that prize pool. Now, of course, I wasn't the only commentator. I was there together with Wardy, with Valdez, as well as Rotterdam. And while I covered about half of some of the series, and I watched as many of them as I possibly could as well, uh, with a bunch of the pro gamers, of course, the one series and the one game that is widely considered to be the best in the entire tournament I did not quite catch. So what I got for you today is a match right here, a Zerg versus Protoss on Battle on the Boardwalk and spawning in the top right corner of the map and playing with the red Protoss probes. We have none other than Showtime. And his opponent spawning in a cross position, playing with the blue Zerg drones. He goes by the nickname of Nurcio. So let's figure out what the hype is all about. Apparently, Showtime immediately just being a little bit annoying there, blocking his opponent's hatchery from going up, and Nurcho is forced to make it at the third base location. Now, I wonder, though, what this map is going to be like, right? Because we have seen a lot of crazy strategies on Battle on the Boardwalks already, and I think that Showtime is not really going to change that up either, because he's already heading towards the bottom right-hand corner of this map. Indeed, it does look like he wants to go for this very quick gold base. Now, Battle on the Boardwalk is rather interesting. The only way you can access this gold base is either just by simply walking there, of course, it's a tight little choke here on the right hand side and of course we see the same here in the bottom left hand corner as well. But the easiest way for you to harass your opponent is either by knocking down these rocks or by going for, for example, an overlord drop or maybe with a medevac or of course a warp prism. It's actually a reasonably safe base, but usually we don't really see Zerg players take it just because their creep spread gets severely limited. If you, uh, if you go ahead and, you know, take this base right here in the bottom left hand corner, your opponent is just going to be able to take exact control and dominance over this entire area of the map. So usually we do see Protoss players taking them quite a bit sooner than we might see the Zerg. Anyway, so far though, I've been really enjoying the new patch. It seems like there's a wide variety of strategies that all of a sudden are viable now. I've been really liking the interaction between, for example, Colossus and Lurkers. This is something that we didn't really see, but with the recent buff to Colossus, now they deal a lot more damage to light units in particular. All of a sudden, it seems that Protoss players are really liking the Colossus once more, as they, of course, are pretty much countering Zerklings and Hydralisks very, very nicely. Anyway, we do see that Stargate going up right now from Showtime. Showtime at the tournament was playing a couple of different early game builds, primarily focused, though, around either the Archon drop or, of course, I think this is gold standard right here, the Stargate. Apparently, he decided to mass recall a couple of the probes from the main base over towards that newly acquired expansion. Now that means that Showtime is going to be able to get a ton of income here very early on. Nurcho immediately figures out exactly what it is he's going up against. He even scouts that Stargate right now as well. Apparently, a single Adept now made its way across the map as well, and it's going to try and see if it can deal a little bit of harassment damage to that third base that Nurcho just acquired at the natural location. Location, but so far, I think this game is indeed making up for a nice little early game macro situation. I mean, Nurcho, not really the kind of player that is really going to heavily harass this base here anyway. And of course, Showtime, he's widely considered to be the best Protoss in Europe. This guy is an absolute monster. He's not really going to take any damage, no matter how hard you try. So it doesn't even look like he's creating this nice little wall here. I like this a lot, right? Rather than just simply keeping track here of the rocks. He's just simply countering it um, before it even really takes place, even going for that shield battery right there in the mineral line, just in case a handful of Zerklings manage to drop off over there. First Oracle already coming in. I wonder exactly what he's planning on doing with this. Apparently, he's going to go for that third base here for Nurcio, see if he can potentially do a little bit of damage. But so far, defense, of course, by Nurcio is looking very solid. He's got Spore Crawlers, he's got a handful of Queens, and he's even getting another Spore right now as well in that first base that he ended up taking, as well as one in the third location here as well. So Nurcio... He was still very heavily focused on that Hydra Link Bane style. However, it almost seemed to me that he wasn't really focusing as much on Bane Links anymore, and he rather just simply switched to watch the Lurkers much faster. Interestingly enough, I never really considered Lurkers to be that great of a counter to, uh, to uh, Colossus play, and I hope we're going to see that in this game as well, by the way. Maybe I'm talking about something that's not even going to happen, but regardless, I never really considered Lurkers to be that great of a counter to Colossus, but because they have the same amount of range when Extended Thermal Lens is researched, uh, they both have a range of 9, you can actually do a lot of damage and some crazy zoning with Lurkers as well, and I've been really liking the way that the Zerg versus Protoss meta is already developing. Once again, Shot 
of time coming back in there, trying to keep track of exactly what it is uh, that is going on here for the Zerg player. So far, not really getting any kind of crazy damage in just yet. Uh, of course, we do see that third base taken now as well for Showtime, and there are already a whole lot of adepts here at the front. I think this is mostly unscouted, although Nurture will now figure out exactly that he will need to start producing a handful of links at the very least, because these adepts can absolutely be an issue. Look at that. More and more of them being warped in here as well. 16 Zerklings right now on that production tab. We only just now uh, see the Evo Chamber as well as the Hydra Den going down. But as you may have noticed, there is no Baiting Nest. There's no plus one attack coming in. There's no Roach Warren anywhere. So Queens and Zerklings are going to be the way to defend this right now here for the Zerk player in blue. And here we go. The adepts are already shading towards that mineral line. I don't know if they want to commit over there. Of course, they can if they want to. And here we go. Zerkling's getting the full surround. Queen's going after all of these adepts as well. So far, Showtime is not quite target firing down any of the workers. There we go. He does end up getting a couple of them. Shades towards the main base as well. Apparently, the uh, the Oracle now also came in at the same time and threw up one of those stasis wards just to be a little bit of a nuisance. But so far, actually, all things considered, I think that Nerd Show is pretty decent uh, with the defense here so far. Not really taking any kind of critical damage, although it's not quite done just yet. I think he will be able to shut it down right here in just a matter of seconds. And in total, it's eight drones that went down. Eight drones. That's actually still pretty substantial. It's kind of funny. Like, you blink twice... When adepts are in a mineral line and all of a sudden eight workers are gone. It seemed like Nurture was quite on top of that. But apparently the lack of Bane links and a quick plus one attack definitely did hurt him. Look at that, right? I'm, I'm happy we get to see this right now as well. We get that Lurker Den coming in as well as the Robotics Bay. So Showtime is going to be making that switch to watch the Colossus play. Or, for example, Disruptors. He's been playing that as well as a counter to his opponent's Lurkers. Uh, at the very least, he's got the option to go for either of them. Whereas Nurture, of course, is going to be going for that Hydra Link style. Also added on with a couple of those Lurkers. And Lurkers, they're so very powerful. If you step in them on accident, you may end up losing everything. Now, once again, though, a Warp Prism coming in here. Two Adepts are getting dropped off. Zerklings, in the meantime, were occupied knocking down the rocks here at the gold base expansion here for the Protoss player. And actually, these two units are dealing a lot more damage than I think they anticipated. Apparently, another Stasis Ward now going down here in the main base as well. Showtime is going for little bits of aggression, but he's really not committing all too much to this, right? I mean, it's really nice. Woo! Once again, beautiful little move there by Nurture, though. Responding just barely in the nick of time. But once again, eight drones go down, bringing the total up to 18 already. Even though Showtime isn't committing a whole lot to this aggression, I mean, he's just mostly expanding to watch more and more bases. Look at that, going for that heavy macro play here. He is just committing a couple of units here and there, slows down his opponent's advancements, and eventually is going to be able to get a ton of units out. I really do like the way that Showtime is approaching this, playing just a very safe, solid strategy, and definitely showing some respect to his opponent there as well. I uh, have seen him play a lot more aggressively, and he knows, obviously, that Nurture is one of the best defensive Zerks on the planet right now as well. He doesn't really, you know, dive very easily. But rather than just committing to a whole lot of aggression, we see, uh, we see Showtime throwing a couple of units here and there and trying to go for a bit of damage. Now, apparently, though, Nurture is not going to go for some Overlord drops as well. I already saw some Lurkers on that production tab. And right now, we also do see these Disruptors coming out, which are going to be incredible against most of these Zerk units here as well. Here we go, though. Ooh, Oracle keeping perfect track of exactly where all of these units are going down. I think that the Lurkers may very well think about burrowing right over here or so. If they manage to do that, of course, they can do a lot of damage. This is a bit of an interesting choke, though, because Nurture is going to be fighting two units, or two smaller armies, rather, from several different angles. Now, also, a whole lot of units are getting loaded up here in that expansion for Nurture. We'll have to keep an eye out on that, because right now, the Lurkers are going to town. Revelation is still on these Lurkers, so that means they can still be spotted. So far, though, huge detonation right there in favor of Nurture. Definitely getting a whole lot of damage done right there and apparently recall now gets forced as indeed there are a lot of units here arriving in that expansion for the protos player a lot of zerg units are getting dropped off but literally every single one of them gets cleaned up in just a matter of seconds is there enough here though for the protos to deal with all of this aggression there are already so many disruptors available warpins i think eventually will clean this up but there's still the threat of course of these lurkers here at the gold base Showtime, however, is already almost mining out that gold base. It doesn't have that many resources available anymore. But I don't think he really wants to give up this positioning. Although it wouldn't be the end of the world as he did just take himself another Nexus. 
Nurchow, however, got to continue piling on the pressure. I really do like the way that it is being played, though. I mean, that single... Uh, where's that Oracle? There was an Oracle somewhere. The Oracle just simply, I think it may have gotten sniped there, but it's it's pushed a bunch of these revelations forward as well, just making this so much more uh, easy here for the Protoss player to actually deal with this. Once again, though, big Disruptor hit there, getting himself a handful of Hydras. Another... Oh, man. These Disruptors are dealing the damage, though. Zerkling's trying to split off and making sure that they can, of course, take some of that damage as well. Disruptor changed up quite a bit. Lynx desperately trying to do some damage here as well, but Nurture does clean up that base. And, of course, like I just mentioned, the one here at the gold base expansion is just about to run out of resources. And Showtime is kind of pushed back into a corner. He definitely needs another base here in just a little bit because he's not going to have a ton of economy here anymore the longer that this goes on, right? If he's going to be contained off of just these three bases, he's going to be in a world of trouble. Nurture now finally getting himself also the um, roly-poly upgrade right here for the Bailings, allowing them to roll a little bit faster and, of course, close the distance a little bit more comfortably. War Prism still trying to fly across the map, trying to see whatever damage he can do. We now also do see that double Colossus production, by the way, for a little while. So now the Colossi are going to come out and they are extremely good against Hydras. Look at them. Absolutely shredding through that in just a couple of those laser beams. It's rather difficult, though, to actually deal with that. And I think that maybe a switch to, for example, a Hive, which we may actually see now that the Infestation Pit is coming in as well. For example, uh, to Corruptors or, for example, to Vipers may very well be worthwhile because... I mean, Showtime is going to build up that Colossus count, I think, the longer that this goes on. We now also do see the Templar Archives here coming in. So lots of sources of splash damage here for Showtime. And apparently, even though he was just pushed back in his bases, about a minute or two later, he's feeling comfortable enough to push across the map at least for a little while. Lots of Bailings now also uh, getting morphed in. Centrifugal Hooks just about to finish up. Extended Thermal Lens is now also done. Showtime, however, decided to just simply send his Warp Prism all the way to the bottom left-hand corner of the map to start warping in over there. And while Overlords will indeed see these Zealots coming in right from the start, I think that this is still going to be able to deal at least a little bit of damage because, I mean, Zealots are kind of scary. They do have some, uh, some pretty decent upgrades as well, already at plus three attack, and of course they've got that charge. A handful of Zerklings is not quite going to be enough, but while this is going on, though, Zerk is moving across the map with an absolutely menacing force. If the force fields and the Disruptor hits are on point, I think that Showtime can hold on. There we go. Beautiful hits already on those Disruptors, getting so much value out of this army. I personally probably would have blown up my own units there instead, but Zerk is still advancing onwards. I think that the Zealots in the meantime were indeed cleaned up inside of that main base, so more and more reinforcements here for Nurture are now coming in. Probes are starting to run very low as well, a single Disruptor also hanging out there and it just barely did not quite get connection. However, the Hydras target fired down the Nexus and even though Nurtio ended up losing a massive amount of units, he's still denying that mining time here for the Protoss player and look at that. Base in the bottom right hand corner mined out. One of the main base running very low here as well. Natural will only have a couple of minutes of mining remaining. Showtime needs this base whereas Zerk is just simply expanding onwards on this map trying to keep a close eye out on exactly what it is this Protoss player is going for as well. And we do see that transition right now towards the Hive. I can't help but wonder though that this is not quite a, uh, a game in the bag just yet for, uh, for Zerk. I mean, sure he ended up killing a lot of units there and sure he ended up killing that base, but a lot of the high-tech units here for Protoss, the ones that they want to keep alive until the end of the game, they are still alive and that's going to be very important. No Psionic Storm this time around, so Showtime is going to be going for the Archons instead, but look at that. More and more Colossus are joining in, and so far, there's no solid counter for the Colossi just yet. I'm a little bit worried here for Protoss, actually, or for Zerg, actually. What exactly are you going to do? Apparently, he's now even getting himself a second... Wait, did I see? Yeah, there's... Why is there... It's showing me an icon of... Okay, I was going to say, there's another Nexi going down right here as well. It's looking at the minimap. For some reason, I didn't see it right there. But indeed, a second Nexus is going down right to the south of this newly acquired one as well. I quite like that decision making. Oracle, by the way, I think this is the one from the earlier part of the game. Still alive. You will be able to uh, just simply put up a couple of stasis wards. And while these changelings will be killed as well, Zerk now knows what he is going up against. The single stalker brave enough to blink forward, trying to see if there's any, you know, Zerk units available. And apparently, he will end up getting surrounded. Gave his life for Aya right there and did a little bit of scouting there as well. We do now see the late game transition, right? It looks like we're at a bit of a low in this game. Neither player really wanting to engage. 
Nurtio is going for the Ultralis Cavern, whereas we see Protoss transitioning right here to the Fleet Beacon and then also a lot of these Stargates. I mean, the last time I checked, right, Ultralis can't shoot up. This could actually be a bit of an issue. Of course, Ultras are pretty great at dealing with Colossus play, but they're still going to have a hard time against all of these Archons. And I wouldn't be surprised that if Showtime, you know, figures out exactly what it is he's going up against, that he just simply throws up a couple of Immortals and just plows through all of those Ultralisks. I'm quite surprised here for Nurtio to actually go for the Ultralisk Cavern. It definitely is a uh, an option here, but... Chitin is plating, and then the Ultralisk, I feel like they're always on a bit of a slim timer against Protoss, because as soon as Protoss realizes what's going on, they're just simply going to go for the counter to those Ultras, and of course, that could either be just straight-up air units, or they could be transitioning uh, to watch, for example, that Immortal Archon Bull that I just mentioned a little bit ago. Mothership now also being built out of the Nexus directly, and while Showtime's economy was in a little bit of trouble, just a couple of minutes ago, all of a sudden, he secured himself two new fresh expansions, and he's going to be able to easily max out, uh, max out on all of this economy. More and more Archons are now also being morphed in. We also see that continued production right now on the carrier. Zerg may very well be looking to advance here, because Zerg, of course, at this point in the game is maxed out. Look at the amount of Banelings here. There's actually uh, no Zerg... Oh, there's two Zerglings available, apparently. Just two Zerklings. They're somewhere here in this composition, but every single one of them, uh, or at the very least, the majority of their brothers got uh, got morphed into these Banelings as well. That me does mean that there is a huge potential here to clean up this game, and Nurtio is gonna go in for the fight. He's gonna go after all of those units. Stays his wards, though, on point. Banelings are collecting with Arkles anymore. Oh my... I don't think you want to do that! Oh! <gasps> These Banelings just connected with a ton of the Archons and Colossi as well. I don't know if that is the engagement that you're looking for. Still, though, so many of these Protoss units end up dying. Also, his hand is now being shown as the Mothership does come out. Nurcho losing a ton of his units there. He's apparently also going to go after a bunch of these Mineral Line probes, though. And 14 of them end up falling there in just a matter of seconds. But was that an engagement that Nurcho is really happy with? I felt like it takes like 18 Banelings to kill a single Archon. I think it's like 17 or 18. I'm not entirely sure how it works out if it's like max shield upgrades here as well for the Protoss player. But regardless, that was a uh, that was a very expensive army there for our Zerg player. And I feel like it didn't really do the damage that he was hoping for. Well defended though by Showtime. Lending those, uh, lending those Disruptor hits very, very nicely and making the correct transition here. I gotta say, I love this. He's been doing this the entire event. Essentially, he goes for the Disruptor uh, play if he sees a lot of Lurkers. Otherwise, he goes for a lot of Colossus indeed. Um, eventually, he's gonna get a mix of both of them and then starts adding on Archons and oftentimes some Immortals as well. But in the ultra late game, right, once he gets like 10 Gas Geysers going, he transitions to watch this Mothership with the Carrier. So while Zerg definitely has got a whole lot of counter here available as well. Of course, we do see uh, the transition right now to watch Patengen Glance and whatnot here as well for the Zerg. So he's going to be able to get himself some Infestors out, and I think the Infestors are crucial for countering these carriers right now. Showtime, while he's taking a lot of damage, he seems to be in a pretty solid position in this game already, because we see him slowly building up that Protoss army, right? The Golden Armada is going to be flying on this map shortly, and Zerg is still stuck on a whole lot of Banelings, Hydras, and Ultralisks. There is, of course, a chance, though, that Nurture is just simply going to push through this, absolutely wipe the floor with whatever is available here for the Protoss, um, and just simply win that way. But the Mothership is going to be such a nuisance to deal with, because there's not a whole lot of detection in this army right now. Disrupt is once again trying to push onwards here as well. A couple of probes apparently ended up dying, but here we go. The Carriers are dealing so much damage. Once again, though, Banelings are going to go after that Mineral Line. They will kill that in just a matter of seconds. Nexus, however, just barely lives. 22 probes there ended up going down, and that's still a pretty substantial amount, but Showtime has got a menacing force, and I think he may very well be going for the counter-attack, and actually... We have to keep an eye out on these Banelings right here while Protoss is moving across the map. There's definitely a chance that he's going to send them after the Mineral Line, but no, apparently Nurtio wants to bring all of his units back home as he's now transitioning to watch a counter to these air units as well. Getting a lot of Hydralisk up right now as well, which is going to be good for the time being. I think eventually he wants to get himself some... Um, Maybe some Infestors or something on th along those lines as well. But for now, he's going to just simply go for the Hydras. And there, actually, we do have a handful of Infestors already coming out. And then also, of course, those Spore Crawlers. 
Neuroparasite now also being researched here for Nurtrio. So he's going to be making that switch towards the Neuro. If he can, of course, take control and mind control a couple of these uh, couple of these carriers. Maybe of the Mothership or potentially even a couple of Archons. There's definitely a good chance that he can still do a lot of damage here to this Protoss army. But, I mean, if there's no more units on the ground, right? It's going to be a very tough army to kill with just Ultralisk. And I think that if Nurture would have realized this, his Nexus was so close to dying and that he had a handful of uh, a handful of Banelings here that could have potentially blown up this mineral line as well, I think he would have felt quite a bit more comfortable in this game right at this point in time. Barrow just completed. Neuroparasite is just finishing up as well. That means, of course, that all of these investors can be casting their Neuros from underground. And this is going to be tricky because this is one of those things that can absolutely wipe the floor with a Protoss player and of course Nurtio, I love this a lot, he's just simply continuously threatening these counterattacks. look at that, not even showing the Ultras. Pushing them back just a little bit, knowing his opponents lack vision, uh, that's gonna be rather important here as well, just uh, because if the Protoss moves across the map, which is exactly what's happening right now, I think that he wants to push in right into that natural, very nicely done. Great Aspire now coming in here as well for Nurtio. Zerkings heading into the main base. They're going to be able to pick up an Immortal here if they want to. I and mean, I also do see the Psionic Storm here research for the Protoss player. Psionic Storm, of course, one of the most powerful spells in the game. But once again, with Neuroparasite and whatnot, it could definitely become a bit of an issue. And while the Zerklings now, uh, with their um, Adrenal Glance upgrade... Actually, do they have Adrenal Glance? No, they don't have Adrenal Glance. That is a very interesting little setup right there for the Zerg player. I'm interested as to why he's decided not to spend that 200 gas. Adrenal Glance is absolutely incredible. He's continuously making Zerglings as well. That may just be a slight error there by Nurtio. Um, it actually does increase the damage of the unit by like 30%. Um, as long as they're actually fighting something. It's very menacing because they plow through things so very rapidly. I'm almost, uh, I'm almost like... Afraid that this is a typical, ca a typical case of local blindness, where I'm just simply not seeing the Adrenal Glance upgrade. But as far as I can see right there, <laughs> I'm known to be blind to some, uh, to some of these things. But as far as I can see, I don't think it's out right now. Anyways, we do see once again a push here uh, going forward for Nurtio. We see a newly acquired expansion for Showtime as well. So he's taking control here of the, um, of the central base here on his side of the map as well. And this is going to be a very important one here too. I mean, while he's slowly mining out all of the bases here that are available on this map, he's getting to a point where his army is extremely menacing. Look at that. How many carriers is that? Man, the, <laughs> the unit step right there is ridiculous. Eight carriers, six Archons, a whole lot of Colossi. We see five Immortals. This is an army that can most definitely beat the Zerks. However, if the Neuroparasites get hit, right? And we see Zerk taking control of that mothership as well as all of these carriers. There's a good chance that Nurtio can still close this one out. There's a lot of tension building up right now. We see the Corruptor switch here as well. Apparently Zerklings managed to make their way towards that base. And I think that they just managed to burrow as well without the Protoss player realizing. Zerklings and Ultras now also making their way to watch that first expansion here for Showtime after he took that gold base. I think he's mostly just sacrificing these Ultras, recognizing that he doesn't really need them anymore. Now, interestingly enough, it may seem like a big kill to get that Nexus, but it really doesn't amount to anything, right? That Nexus is not important whatsoever. Zerklings once again apparently being a little, of a, a little bit of a pain in the ass here for the Protoss to deal with, but at this point, I mean, we've kind of arrived at a point in the game where Showtime doesn't really want to have that many workers anymore, right? I mean, the more supply that's caught up in workers, the smaller his army will become, and he's already dropping some of those units as well. There's a very high-tech army here, though, for the Zerg player. Lots of Spore Crawlers, lots of Brute Lords, lots of Corruptors. We see Queens, Hydralisk, and Infester. Even a couple of Infested Terrans now popping their head out of that egg as well. They were ready to start firing here as well, but Protoss is going to be in a rather powerful position. And I've seen the Golden Armada win in these kind of scenarios a little bit too many times to count it out right already. Zerglings, though, continuously being annoying, and I love this. He's just simply buying so much time by being an absolute nuisance. Just countering a bunch of these upgrades would be absolutely massive. And there we see Showtime losing one of his armor upgrades that was being researched, or his shield upgrades rather, that was being researched here uh, in that fort. And that's something that is very, very important. Continuous harassment though all over the map. Apparently this war prism 
is still not found here for the Zerg player either. I think he would have loved to send a couple of Corruptors that way just to snipe it and make sure that this gold base can happily mine here for a little while longer. But Showtime is currently maxed out. He's going to be sending a couple of these Disruptors forward, actually. Gets himself a full energy Infester. Definitely can't complain about that, but I think at this point in the game, Showtime really won't be able to warp in that many units anyway, because he's already maxed out. But apparently he says that, and of course, or I say that, and of course, four Zealots are indeed going to be able to charge into this mineral line and deal a whole lot of damage. Zerklings still trying to unburrow and burrow all the time, just trying to be as annoying as he possibly can be. But I think we're leading up to one major engagement, and this may very well be it. Protoss is trying to push onward here. Disruptor is already sending some of their shots forward once again, right? And this is quite smart here by Showtime. He's just simply baiting the infested Terrans out and eventually um, just backs off, right? He uh, makes the Zerg player waste a bunch of energy here. He gets the revelations off once again, and eventually he just backs off, knowing that, of course, that energy is gonna, you know, accumulate once again. But for now, I think that he must feel pretty solid about this scenario. Showtime, once again, making a bit of a push across the map. He doesn't want the Stalkers and the Zealots anymore at this point. He probably wants to replace them here with higher tech units. So that means he's just simply going to make slow and decisive movements here. And Nurtio is starting to drop in the amount of supply that he's got. Look at that. Great play by, by Showtime, actually. Right now, already, we do see one of the carriers being caught here. And that means that it will get killed in just a matter of seconds. But Nurtio's bank is depleted. He's not mining nearly as much anymore as he was earlier on into this game, and Showtime is slowly chipping away at his opponent, right? Interestingly enough, he's continuously pushing here towards the center part of the map, but he doesn't really commit to the engagement very much. Instead, he's dealing the damage here with these runbys. And another hatchery does fall here in the bottom left-hand corner, forcing Zerg to split up these units, and I think that over time, Considering Showtime is just simply mining out all of his bases and he's still getting bigger and bigger armies, I think that over time this is going to go in favor here of the Protoss player just because of the sheer amount of stuff that he's able to create, right? He's chipping away at this Zerg force. And while once again he's posturing to go forward, I wouldn't be surprised if he backs up right after a little bit of damage gets dealt. And right once again, we see a couple of these infested Swarm Axe being thrown up as well. They're going to be able to deal a little bit of damage, but Protoss doesn't really want to commit all too much and instead just simply deal some damage here with a handful of Zealots instead. I think the War Prism eventually did manage to uh, make its way back home, or maybe it ended up dying, judging by the fact that apparently a couple of new ones are currently queued up in the robotics facility. I think that that second part right there was true. Quite surprised, actually, that uh, Nurcio hasn't quite uprooted these, uh, these Zerkings anymore, and he's been able to uh, get that base ransacked once again. I think that he's just been uh, occupied elsewhere. These couple of Corruptors must have been the ones that cleaned up that War Prism there eventually. But still, there's a very scary Protoss army that's slowly forming. And if it's going to be based around the Carrier, the Mothership, and then also the High Templar... I mean, we've kind of arrived at a point right now where you may even want to get rid of all of these units. Right? These units are fine and dandy. But if you manage to switch your entire force to Mass Air... Uh, I mean, the majority of the units on the ground for the Zerg are not going to be very helpful anymore. And that, of course, includes the Brute Lords as well, because they can only shoot down. Pretty interesting here, right? This is a point in the game that is still very much so undiscovered. Like, this is something we will probably see a lot more of in the next couple of years of Professional StarCraft 2. But this is a point in the game where a lot of people may not necessarily be entirely sure what the correct way to play this one out is. I mean, Protoss is playing it very patiently. I'm actually rather impressed here by Showtime's patience. I mean, he's got 6,000 resources in the bank. He's got a force that is essentially unkillable. He's got 47 workers, so that means he's got a menacing amount of army supply. And still, he's playing this so very slowly. Fungal growth going down now, however, and actually getting this army for free would be a very big pickup here for... Oh my god, these two... Oh, these investors did so much! Oh man, does this... Oh man, that was a great hit there! The Disruptor's absolutely shutting down a handful of them, and that is ideally the army that you're looking for if you are the Zerg player right now. At the same time, though, Protoss once again trying to make a bit of a move forward, going after a bunch of these Spore Crawlers, and he's chipping away at the Zerg, right? He's chipping away at all of these units. Interceptors, though, will be forced to return towards their carrier with a lot of that energy once again wasted. Apparently, Showtime, though, is feeling confident enough to actually fight such a powerful Zerg army here while his forces are split up. That's not something that's easy to do, right? That's not something that is an easy decision to make, uh, or that's an easy decision to make. Technically speaking, sure, he could lose all of these units and just simply remake them. 
But I personally probably would have put them all together in one big clump and tried to just simply shut down the Zerg that way. Still though, this is still gonna be such a tough engagement here for the Protoss player to win because there's so many Spore Crawlers available and we're almost at a point where this is, you know, a little bit of a stillmate, right? Showtime's got a lot of units. He's got a very menacing army. Nurtio's supply is not as heavy as his opponents. But there's so many Spore Crawlers here available, though maybe Showtime has found a way to completely bypass all of the Spores. Spores are still burrowed over there though, so I think that indeed Nurtio is calling the bluff here, realizing that Protoss is very unlikely to want to engage through such a tight little choke. War Prism though, now also with a couple of High Templar in there. Apparently it's flown forward just to try and see if it can do a little bit of damage. Don't know exactly what he's planning on doing with that. And actually, once again, we see that Archon Colossus Disruptor Army pushing forward here, trying to pull that Zerg player apart while the carriers are making their way towards the southern end of the map instead. And I think that this is indeed going to be a sacrifice for the Blood God as Showtime kills every single one of these units. Or actually, rather, loses every single one of these units, and that's gonna be a uh, that's gonna be an interesting setup, right? Look at that supply count right now. It's 175 supply here for the Protoss player versus 160 ish for the Zerg. However, there are three carriers right now on that production tap, and I think that Showtime, once he gets those units out, he's gonna max out on an army that's so very hard to counter. I mean, look at that. He's now even. Oh man, I love this. Right? This is something we've barely seen before. He's got three war prisms out. All of them are loaded up with High Templar. High Templar, of course, very slow, very vulnerable to, uh, to you know, air versus ground-based armies. But, of course, if you put them in a War Prism, you drop them and land the storms and then put them back in, these Brute Lords are not going to be able to deal any damage to this whatsoever. And apparently, Protoss is now feeling confident, once again, to make a bit of a push forward. Those are just change things right there on that mini-map, so not all too many Zealots there going for the counter-attack. Showtime, though, doesn't have a very big bank here anymore himself either. This can really go either way. Look at that. Both players sacrificing so many drones as this base is about to mine out as well, and I think that all of these mineral patches will soon be down to zero. Once again, though, assimilations coming in. Beautiful storms there, even getting a couple of feedbacks as well. Getting rid of a whole lot of these uh, infestors, but the High Templar also ended up paying for that movement with their life. And while apparently the Oracle doesn't have that much energy anymore, the Golden Armada is once again maxed out. Look at that. Oh my god. That is a scary army. How many is that? 11 High Templar, 17 carriers. How many Infestors are there here in total? There's 9 Brute Lords, 29 Infestors? He could technically speak a Neuroparasite this entire army? And it would be nothing that Showtime would be able to do against it, unless he manages to kill all of these units beforehand. Great, the Revelation's already going down though. Once again, beautiful Fungal Growths as well, shutting down these Interceptors. Interceptors, of course, now 15 Minerals each. There's not a whole lot of um, supply here available anymore for Showtime. I mean, sure he can rebuild the Interceptors, but maybe only once or twice more. He doesn't have the income and the, and the resource available right now to continuously keep rebuilding them. Interceptors are still going down here, and Showtime is trying to build up as many of them as he can. Look at that. 14 right now on that production tab. A lot of these carriers are trying desperately to build all of those Interceptors once again. And Showtime is actually running into a little bit of trouble here. His army is still so big, though. Nurtio is only at 130 supply, right? Once again, forcing a lot of energy here out of these Infested Terrans. Infested Terrans get stormed before they can even jump out of their egg. Showtime is slowly advancing onwards, once again, landing the beautiful storms there, shutting down the majority of that anti-air, and I can't help but wonder if Nurcho has just simply too many anti-ground units. I mean, look at that. Those Brute Lords are essentially doing nothing. They're getting stormed right now. Fungal Growths are going down everywhere, but I think there's just a little bit too much Protoss, and Nurcho is forced to GG out in one of the most epic games of Zerg vs. Protoss that I've seen in a while. It looked like Nurtio was significantly ahead in the earlier stages of this game, right? Just simply containing his opponent on three bases, never allowing that fourth. But right when Showtime managed to get his fourth and then later on his fifth base up, 
it got absolutely out of control. I think this shows though that there's still a lot of figuring out to be done in the later stages of most of the matchups of StarCraft 2. But for now, I hope you enjoyed watching this epic game of Zerg vs Protoss. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more and you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more videos. And of course, I try to do so pretty much every single day. For now though, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile or write. Special thank you to all of the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. But I will see you all in the next one.